In this video, we're going to learn how to use Llama Index's text to SQL functionality with ClickHouse. So I'm gonna quickly launch my ClickHouse client. And if we do show tables, we can see there's a table in there called surveys. Now this table contains information from one of the stack overflow surveys of developers that they do every year. So let's write a query that looks at system columns and we're gonna pull out all the columns except for ones that have a type of enum. So you can see these are the types of columns that we're dealing with. So we've got developer tools that I've worked with, ones that I'd like to work with, web frameworks, platforms, uh, compensation. And if we scroll up a little bit, we can see uh, how did you learn to code? How many years have you been coding? What country are you from? And a bunch of other information as well. Let's just tweak the query so we can get the ones that have an enum. So an enum in a database, similar to how it is in a programming language. So these fields can only contain a certain number of values and those are defined up front and they then get converted to numbers uh, under the hood. So you can see here we've got the age has a particular set of ranges. We've got the member of other communities. We've got uh, self-active community member. If we can, if we go up a little bit, you can see some other ones. So it has a Stack Overflow account, visits frequently, compensation frequency, operating system, education level, employment, and then development activity. And so let's have a look at one of the records in this table. So you can see that comes back. This is one of the developers who filled this in. So they visit Stack Overflow a few times a month or weekly. They consider themselves active. They're 25 to 34 years old. They've worked with Laravel and Symfony. And then if we go up a little bit more, you can see they've worked with Postgres and SQLite. They'd like to work with SQLite as well. They want to work with Swift. They're from Slovakia. They're educated up to secondary school level and they're 18 to 24. So now we're going to have a look at how we can do some text to SQL on that data set. So let's open our IPython REPL. We're going to import OpenAI and time and sys. We'll then get some modules from Llama Index. We're going to get the SQL Alchemy create engine function. And then we're going to get some modules from the rich library so we can render the results in a bit of a nicer way on the REPL. We're going to start by looking at an adjusted version of the system prompt that we're going to pass to the model. So we'll paste in the first bit. So this is kind of giving it an overview of what we're going to do. It's sort of telling it what to expect, what not to do, what, what, <laughs> what to do. And then if we paste in the next bit, it tells this is the extra bit that we've done from the one that's in the Llama index repository. So we're telling it, if you see an array, you need to use this function instead of what you might think that you should use. And then finally gives it some indication of how the data is going to be uh, formatted and what it should come up with. So now let's create ourselves a prompt using the prompt template and that template that we just created. We'll initialize our database credentials and then we're going to create ourselves a SQL Alchemy engine and then we'll create a SQL database uh, pointing at that surveys table that we saw before. And then finally, we're going to create an NL SQL table query engine from Llama Index. We'll pass in our SQL database. Again, we'll tell it surveys table, pass in the prompt. And then we're going to tell it we're going to be using the uh, OpenAI LLM. So we're going to use GPT 3.5 Turbo Instruct. And then finally, we're going to start a little timer. We'll give it a query. So what is the most popular database? We'll then call the SQL engine with our query that will give us back a response. Then we're going to construct ourselves a rich table, which is going to have a description and some details. The first thing is going to be the answer. So we'll put that in. The next bit is going to be the actual SQL query that it used to go and query ClickHouse. And then we'll finally put in the time taken at the end. And so if we run that first query, you can see it comes back and it says Postgres is the most popular database with a total of 27,882 respondents. Now that's not actually quite correct. So if you look in the SQL query bit, you can see it's done an array join on database I want to work with. So that this is actually Postgres is the one that people want to work with, not necessarily the one they are working with. So let's go back and tweak our query a bit to say the one, the database that people are working with now. And let's see if that does any better. And so you see that comes back and now it has actually identified that it's my SQL that's the one that people are working with rather than the one that they would like to work with. So you can see it's database have worked with uh, in the SQL query. Let's try another one. So what programming languages do programming bootcamp graduates work with? So this is not exactly matching any of the text that was that is stored, but it should be close enough, I think. So let's see, let's see how it's going to get on. So you see, it's, it comes back. Unfortunately, I'm unable to provide a response. 
uh, please check the query and try again. And you see what it's tried to do is it's come up with a field which doesn't exist called developer type, and then it's tried to match it to boot camp graduate. So I tried changing the model to GPT-4 and that didn't help. So I tried GPT-4.0 and GPT uh, Turbo as well. And it was still generating incorrect queries, but then what it was doing was, was it was saying, well, actually, although it doesn't have the, this query is incorrect, here's a hypothetical answer based on the information that I have. And so that was actually probably, uh, possibly worse uh, than, than, than just giving me no answer. And so what I found is when I was trying to find things in those array columns, it was kind of struggling a, a bit. If you were doing a, an exact match on just a string one, uh, it wasn't doing too badly. But I think like this general approach of trying to get like a, gener a general, like LLM to do Texas equal is maybe not going to be where we end up. And I sort of kind of like the look of this uh, product here way, uh, which is uh, says it's building Texas equal right into your product. And there are a few other ones like this. And I wonder whether we're going to end up with those type of services or maybe fine tune models are going to be where we end up with for this uh, type of problem. Uh, but that's the end of this video. I'll, there's a link also to a blog post in that I'll put in the description where you can read uh, more about it. And I'll see you in the next video.